Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Decoding the Unknown. As always, hello, I'm your host Simon. What happens here, the format of this show, one of my writers, today Katie, thank you Katie, writes me a script. I've uh, never read it before, it's what I call a cold read. Not me, I think that's the way you call these things. Like, well, you've never read something before, and then you read it. We explore together, dear audience, and then afterwards, Jen... What do you say, Jen? Once I saw this kitty to moth is going to cut at all the pauses in my thinking time and make me sound smarter than I really am. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, thank you, Katie. This one's all about the Mothman. I think I came up with this idea because wasn't there a really, like, it was a scary but maybe bad movie? It must be like 20 years ago now. It was ages ago. Um, about this. And I was like, mm, sounds like something for decoding the unknown, doesn't it? Crack on. Let's go. <laughs> The Mothman is kind of a weird case. He doesn't really fit in with your common or garden cryptids. And as there have been many sightings of this creature from many different people, some of them actually quite believable. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Prior to writing this piece, I'd heard of The Mothman, but didn't really know much about it at all. There is, of course, the Richard Gere movie from 2002 called The Mothman Prophecies. Did I just say that movie was 20 years old? And it is exactly 20 years old. Nailed it! Nailed it! Oh, I was driving along the road the other day. And you know sometimes where there's like a big queue? This is a completely irrelevant tangent. I'm sorry for starting with something from my personal life so early. I'm sitting in the car with my family and I'm driving. And uh, you know you get those road systems sometimes where it's like there's, you know, a left turn and a right turn. And the right turn is much less busy. And then the left turn is much busier. You know, there'll just be two lines of traffic and one is always bigger. And then you get those dickheads who'll drive all the way down like the empty one and then just like indicate in at the front and basically skip the entire queue. And there's one of these near my house. And I'm like just driving along and I always turn right. So I'm always in the right hand queue and I'm just driving along and there's the huge queue on the left. I'm not pushing in, but there's a car in front of me. And I just, and you know, not often people do this, but you'll sometimes see it. You know, people generally turn right if they're in the right hand lane. And there's a car in front of me. And I say to my wife, that guy's going to push in. And she's like, how do you know? And I'm like, just, just watch, just watch, just watch. And we're getting to the end and he's not indicating it. He's not indicating it. I'm like, oh no, come on, prove me right. Boom. Last minute, he indicates it. And I'm like, yes. Well, I say, how did you know that? And I'm like, because he's driving a BMW X5M. <laughs> It's like the, the choice. I'm, I'm like amazed he actually used the indicator because it's the choice of car for d <laughs> I don't mean that. Look, if you're driving an X5M, good for you, but you're probably a d when it when it comes to driving. Sorry. Sorry. That was such a long tangent. This happened yesterday and I was so pleased with myself like an idiot. Uh, there's the Richard Gere movie from 2002 called The Mothman Prophecies, but in keeping with tradition, I did not watch it for this episode, as it's just based on a book that we'll reference a lot later. The two main questions I had going into this were, number one, why is the story of the Mothman linked to a bridge disaster? Is there actually any connection? And two, why, if he's constantly described as being half bat, half man, or half bird, half man, did he end up becoming called the Mothman? Not one person thought that he looked like a giant moth. Oh, I assumed that he'd been bitten by a moth. <laughs> well, no, not really. I have seen the Mothman prophecies, but I saw it in 2002. I have no memory of it. I didn't even realize Richard Gere was in it. Anyway, I'm sure we'll find the answer to these questions as we delve into the sort of st uh, into the story of the Mothman of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Well, I hope we do, as otherwise I'll be pretty annoyed. The only thing I know about West Virginia is that song, West Virginia, something, 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 going home. That's a song, right? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. <laughs> I can already see people in the comments. <laughs> Shut the f up and get to the story. We're here for a Mothman, not to hear our BMW drivers. The first sightings. November 1966 was when the Mothman first burst onto the scene. Over the course of just a couple of days, eight witnesses came forward to report that they'd seen a large, strange wing creature in or around the vicinity of Point Pleasant, a small town in West Virginia. One of these people was Kenneth Duncan, who, along with some other people, was digging a grave on Saturday, November the 12th. This was in Charleston, about 50 miles, 80 kilometers southeast of Point Pleasant. Duncan reported to the Williamson Daily News that something resembling a brown human being had flown by him. It then proceeded to glide through some trees before disappearing. 
hearing. No one else with him saw it, and it probably wouldn't have warranted any other attention had not for a few other sightings taken place around the same time. Uh-oh. Sounds like some people need to get carbon monoxide detectors. Or checked out psychologically. On the 15th of November, building contractor Newell Partridge was settling down to watch some TV when the screen suddenly went off fuzzy, a loud whining sound could be heard outside, and his dog Bandit started barking up a storm. Partridge shone his flashlight outside and picked up something like two reflectors near his barn. Bandit went running toward the shape. <laughs> Dude, what are you up to? I'll be like, my power goes out, and there's a demon creature lurking outside. I'm like, quickly, get under the get under the bed covers. That'll protect me. Bandit went running toward the shape, and Partridge went inside to get his gun, but oh bandit's the dog. I'm so stupid. Why can't I follow a simple story? I went inside to get his gun, but was overwhelmed by a feeling of terror. I couldn't bring himself to go back out. Yeah, no surprise. I don't blame you, dude. Why would you go back out? Why would you go out at all? Poor bandit was never seen again. He was harvested. Uh, this took place in Salem, about 90 miles or 144 kilometers as the Mothman flies from Point Pleasant. About 90 minutes after this encounter came the one that really got the Mothman story going. In what sounds like the build-up to a tacky horror movie, two young couples were in a car near an abandoned military facility in the middle of the night. You couldn't write fiction like this. People would be like, it's too cliched. Uh, what were they doing there? Well, apparently this area was a well-known make-out spot, so presumably they were doing what young people did in the 1960s, which was necking. I used to think that this literally meant rubbing your neck against someone else's like a randy giraffe until I was embarrassingly old. I assume it just means making out, like it's an old-timey way of people making out, right? Why, why would you be rubbing your neck? It's like, yeah, people in the past loved that sh Anyway, the area was an old National Guard armory building and was known locally as the TNT area because a lot of ammunition was made there during World War II. Does this sound like a romantic spot to take your partner and another couple to indulge in a bit of necking? Not really, but Point Pleasant isn't that big, so I suppose people just went where they could. Getting back to the point, the couples were rudely interrupted from their hanky-panky or their necking with the appearance of the Mossman. Oh, sh <laughs> I was just coming here to make out another f***ing Mossman? Fucking cock block Mothman. According to an article, <laughs> there's three words that I thought would never come out of my mouth. Cock block Mothman. According to an article in the Point Pleasant Register, for <laughs> sorry, November 16, 1966, the couple saw the thing as being about six or seven feet tall, having a wingspan of ten feet and red eyes about two inches in diameter and six inches apart. After driving away from the thing, it started running after the car, but was apparently not great at running, so it took to the air, where it followed them at a whopping 100 miles per hour as they tried to speed away. Did cars in 1966 go 100 miles per hour? I guess so. I would have, if I was in a car from 1966, I don't think I'd ever go above 10 miles per hour, because I'd be like, yo, you crash in a car, you crash a car from 1966 100 miles per hour, you're going to be like just a bunch of red mist. Jesus. It didn't even seem to be trying that hard to keep up, also being described as hovering and gliding over the car as the terrified occupants drove back to town. One of the men, Steve Millette, described it thusly. It was like a man with wings. It wasn't like anything you'd see on TV or in a monster movie. Not until 2002, at least. The creature eventually ran off into a field and the couples made it to town. Acknowledging the weirdness of the situation, the other man in the car, driver Roger Scarberry, said, If I had seen it while by myself, I wouldn't have said anything, but there were four of us who saw it. Seems fair enough. These four people were so spooked that they actually did the sensible thing that no one in horror movies ever does, and that's go to the police station. Cops went back with the couples out to the TNT area, but found nothing. Incidentally, on the way back to town, Scarberry said that he had seen the body of a large dog on the side of the road. Bandit, no! But when they went back with the cops, it was gone. Was this the missing bandit? Unfortunately, we'll never know. He was probably consumed by the Mothman. No, I read that like Katie wrote it, but I... I made that up. I don't think... Maybe Bandit was consumed by the Mothman. Does Richard Gere play the Mothman in the Mothman Prophecies? <laughs> no, he probably plays the good guy hunting the Mothman, doesn't he? That's more up Richard Gere's... Richard Gere's... path. Is that the word I'm looking for? So dim. There were also apparently scratch marks on Scarberry's car from the encounter with the creature. Scarberry is proud of his 57 Chevy and would not have left it scratched up if the marks had happened prior to the incidents. I also saw that the TNT area was used to drag racing, so maybe that's why they were there and my mind was just in the gutter. They weren't drag racing, they were 
they were necking i think i'm gonna bring that back they're like <laughs> necking <laughs> love it the sheriff held a pre- press conference the following day and it was from this that the name mothman was first attributed to the creature other sources about this story mentioned that Mothman was a villain in the Adam West Batman TV show, but I couldn't find a character with that name. There was a moth character who was a fi- who was female and also a killer moth, but he didn't appear in the TV show. He was in the comics, though, so either it was a niche reference by a giant nerd or else it was a throwaway comment that somebody made up on this. And it just kind of stuck. It is a good name, though, like Mothman. It's kind of scary, even in just the word. I feel like maybe by saying the word Mothman, like you know when you say things like three what was it like i was a kid i was so scared of this because i was like six whereas like if you said something into a mirror like three times that terrifying creature would appear or something or it's from a movie so i was always i was afraid of mirrors <laughs> it's like oh what if i accidentally say it and they come ah! and then i read this is all the stupid shit you believe as a kid i remember reading a book about vampires now they don't appear in mirrors so whenever i was in a room and i was looking in the mirror for too long i'd just look behind me to make sure there's not a vampire there <laughs> anyone else do that just me i find this ironic as the couple stated in paper in the paper that it apparently is afraid of light which is kind of like the opposite of a moth but there you go as batman was already taken a birdman sounds just a bit stupid i guess my question from the beginning has been answered but i'm not very happy about it the headline of the point pleasant register piece was couple see man-sized bird creature something which is really the same sentiment as we project onto mothman to this day as his description has never been totally pinned down after the announcement of the existence of this creature, it might not totally surprise you to learn that sightings of the Mothman started popping up all over Point Pleasant. More and more people reported seeing a large winged creature and hundreds of people and reporters were visiting the TNT area every night to try and get a glimpse. This isn't... they're not seeing it more because they're going to look for it more. They're seeing it... I mean... Sorry, that's that's kind of exactly what's happening. They're seeing it because they know it exists and so now they're like seeing it everywhere. But it's not like they're going to the TNT place and there's more sightings because they're all going there and the Mothman's flying around like, there he is! Yay! But he's my friend, all right? Every sighting mentioned the six to seven feet height of the creature and the wingspan of usually at least ten feet or three meters. They also usually agree that the creature was grayish in color and had glowing red eyes, or at least eyes that glowed red when they were hit by a light source. Some saw him gliding between trees, others saw him lift straight up off the ground like a helicopter. A feeling of dread also accompanied some of these encounters, and writer and ufologist John Keel, who wrote the book The Mothman Prophecies, also had first-hand experience of this phenomenon. Oh yeah, but he's a he's a um a ufologist, isn't he? I don't know, I just with those guys I'm like, I just you just it's just less believable. Also you wrote a book about the Mothman. <laughs> Oh, Simon, check your skepticism. After a friend had mentioned this bird man terrorizing the people of Point Pleasant to him, Kiel made straight for the town. He went back to the TNT area with some people who had been in that Chevy, and together they experienced strange noises, sudden fear. One girl was a nervous wreck after thinking she'd spotted the glowing eyes again, and another woman's ear started bleeding out of nowhere. Kiel scouted out the area by himself afterwards and found there was a zone that induced a horrible feeling of foreboding if he walked through it. When he returned again in the morning, no such feelings occurred. There was also nothing that could have reflected their flashlights to look like red eyes. From these initial November 1966 sightings, there were over a hundred reports of people seeing the Mothman in the following year, but that ain't all they saw. Now comes a totally weird piece of the story. Yes, even weirder than a seven-foot-tall flying humanoid with glowing red eyes. We're talking the Men in Black. Here come the Men in Black. It's galaxy Defenders. Here come the Men in Black. If, like me, you thought that The Men in Black was just an enjoyable movie featuring soon-to-be box office kryptonite Will Smith, well, we were wrong. It turns out that the smartly dressed yet out-of-place people descended on Point Pleasant in the wake of the Mothman sightings and proceeded to freak out the inhabitants nearly as much as the Mothman had not just possible CIA agents trying to cover up extraterrestrial activity, these men in black seemed not totally of this world themselves. Plus, if there really was CIA, a CIA or other agency cleanup crew after the weird events, why would all they, why would they all conspicuously wear black suits? No one walks around like that, just wear some jeans and you'd fit right in. Anyway, back to the oddballs cluttering up the streets of Point Pleasant in the spring of 1967. Reporter Mary Hire, who had written about the Mothman sightings and other strange possible UFO activity in the area, was visited several times by these black-suited strangers. According to a friend of Mary, she had said that the strangers never blinked. Okay. 
One of the original witnesses, Linda Scarberry, said they wore black suits, black hats, and sunglasses. They drove black cars, Cadillacs, I think. They looked like human beings, but their skin was somewhat transparent. You could see the veins in their hands very clearly. Their fingers were longer than a normal person's fingers as well. Daddy shook hands with them. Thanks for noticing. And said they were awkward in shaking hands. They seemed to not know what to do or how to shake hands. This sounds entirely made up. This sounds ridiculous. Like, yo, yo, yo. So you know how to drive a car. You know what suits look like, but you don't know how to shake hands. Really, guys? She also said that they followed them around town in cars, and once the family drove into a drive through to escape them, and the Cadillac followed them in. Personally, I'm not sure that's suspicious. Maybe the men in black just really wanted cheeseburgers. Or, alternatively, maybe this story is just made up. Also, you're kind of stuck in a line if you go through a drive through so it's really not a good place to go if you're trying to escape from someone. Yes, because the story is made up. The strangers were also usually described as having conservative ties, square clothes, recent haircuts. Maybe it was just a group of Mormons, or some other religious group, or even a cult. It was the mid-1960s, after all. All kinds of weird movements were going on. John Keel goes on to detail more encounters the people had with these men in black in his The Mothman Prophecies book, but to be honest, it all gets really, really weird. Like, too weird to actually believe. <laughs> I'm already like this, I just already don't believe this, this... I mean, I'm not against the Mothman idea, I do, there's like weird creatures and sh**, but like, this is just silly. We're already silly, and it sounds like it's about to get sillier. So let's leave this men in black bit here as nothing ever came of it. They just seemingly menaced citizens of Point Pleasant without really doing anything and then disappeared. In fact, I didn't come across any mention of them at all in many of the Mothman articles I read, so maybe gov the government is still trying to keep their involvement under wraps. Or maybe none of this ever happened! Or maybe that! Let's move on to the next piece of the mystery, and I question why. And the question I had at the beginning of the start: What does a large, spooky, winged humanoid have to do with the bridge collapsing? I have to say, I don't remember this at all. I don't I, like. I saw that movie. I don't remember a bridge. But to be fair, I didn't even remember Richard Gere. Apparently, he was the star of the movie. Sightings of the mysterious Mothman were fairly regular occurrences, occurrences from November 1966 through to December 1967. One witness, Virginia Thomas, told Kiel that she'd seen something bigger than a man gliding fast over a field towards the trees. This was on the 2nd of November 1967, and she had had vivid, bad dreams ever since. In Kiel's book, it's stated that she says, I see a lot of strange people around the river. It's like some kind of invasion or something. They come over the bridge in trucks, and they pour into the TNT area. We grab the kids and run. I can't figure out what it means. Reporter Mary Hire also told Keel about the strange dreams she'd be having later. I had a terrible nightmare. There were a lot of people drowning in the river, and Christmas packages were floating everywhere in the water. But I've covered a lot of drownings on that river, but never anything like this dream. I mean, this is like... Okay, so you're telling someone about a dream you had fascinating the only people who find the only person who finds dreams interesting is the person who had the dream they'd be like oh my god i had this crazy dream last night and you're like this is the most fascinating thing ever i must tell everyone about it but just put yourself in that position have you ever been told a dream from someone that is actually interesting like i had this crazy dream last night and they tell you the story and you're like all right because you lived that dream vividly in your mind and it was interesting to you but to everyone else is like all right <laughs> Uh, the quote continues, There were so many people, I've been feeling uneasy ever since, and everybody else feels the same way. You can't really put your finger on it, but it's like something awful is about to happen. This is just mass hysteria. Unfortunately for the residents of Point Pleasant, these dreams did indeed come true. On December the 15th... Oh, what? Fifth, what? Okay. There's going to be Christmas packages floating in a river whilst there's a truck on the bridge full of toys? On December the 15th, 1967, the Silver Bridge, which crossed the Ohio River, collapsed, resulting in the deaths of 46 people. Oh my god. Had the Mothman been trying to warn people of the impending tragedy by sending them visions in their dreams, was he, in fact, the cause of the disaster? Or, as you're probably thinking, did the two events have absolutely nothing in common and people are trying to make any old connection to try and understand how such a thing could happen? Whatever the reason, the tragedy proved bigger than keeping the Mothman thing going, and sightings of him petered out after the Silver Bridge fell. It's also worth pointing out that the bridge collapsed for totally non-mysterious reasons. It was quite old, and it was built when vehicles weighed a lot less and had no built-in contingencies if a section of it broke. It was crowded with cars near Christmas, and an eye bar underneath the bridge finally failed, sending the suspended part of the bridge crashing into the river in a matter of seconds. At the time, it was the deadliest bridge disaster in U.S. history. There have been a, there's been another bridge disaster in the U.S. where more than 46 people died? That's intense. Also, I guess this was back in the day. But I feel like people should be like, well, should we check that bridge, see if we can deal with cars? Because back in the day, we just had horses. And I mean, horses are heavy. 
but not that heavy. Theories. So what's going on up there in Point Pleasant? Or maybe it's down there, depending on where you live. One of the reasons that Mothman has persisted for so long is the number and credibility of the witnesses. Everyone reported more or less the same creature. Many suffered feelings of dread or heard a strange noise at the time of the encounter. People like deputy firefighters and news reporters, i.e. people with good local standing, reported having seen him. Again, this can all be just down to like, I, these people aren't necessarily lying. They're just seeing a bat and being like, oh my god, that's the Mothman. It just innocently. And of course, some people are making it up because, you know, just for giggles. The couples in the car had nothing to gain from reporting their encounter, and their first thought was to immediately get help from the police, showing that even if the Mothman wasn't really a spooky, giant winged creature, they believed that it was at the time. Um, doesn't show that. Look, imagine you're a 15 year old kid. And you're like hanging out with your friends and you're like, you know, it'd be real funny. Let's get the town into hysterics by, into like a hysterical state, not like by being funny, but like, let's get everyone worried. Let's just go to the police station and report that all four of us saw a giant moth man. <laughs> it's like the sort of thing like kids would do just because kids are d***s. With so many sightings, there had to be something going on, right? Well, here are some of the most popular theories to explain what the moth man really was. A supernatural entity. It seems that some, if not most, of the inhabitants of Point Pleasant really did believe this was an otherworldly creature and not something naturally found in their neck of the woods. The visions, sounds, and other stuff that accompanied a Mothman sighting only added to this belief. Strange dancing lights had been seen in the area, and in March 1966, the same year the Mothman first appeared, someone told writer John Keel that they'd seen a silver disc in the sky. Here is how the sighting is described in his book. I'll preface this by saying that the source was a woman who wished to remain anonymous, but he described her as a shapely housewife. What? The past. <laughs> it's like, who's your source? Ah, some shapely housewife. <laughs> it looked like a glisten. Quote, 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 here we go. It looked like a glistening metal disc and was hovering directly above the school playgrounds. A door-like aperture was open at its rim and there was a man standing outside. He was not standing in the doorway, he was standing outside the object in mid-air. Exclamation point. He wore a silvery tight skin costume and had very long silvery hair. He was looking down into the schoolyard intently. She watched him for a long moment until her children bounded up to the car. When she looked again, the man and object were gone. She decided not to tell anyone about the strange vision, attaching religious significance to it. End quote. What kind of religious significance she attached to this is anyone's guess. I'm not up to date on current religious trends, but I don't think there's one where the deity's zipping around in a flying saucer in a skin-tight silver suit. Oh, Katie, there's bad. <laughs> there are so many like weird, bizarre, oddball religious things. There's definitely a group out there that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an alien spaceship, silver skin-tight suits. There's it's out there, and there's people who believe it. Other objects were spotted in the sky of a Point Pleasant that same summer, but no one officially reported anything. They just seemed to take it in their stride. Did these UFOs have a link to the Mothman? That's not really there's not really any evidence for or against the theory of the Mothman being an extraterrestrial. It's just whatever he choose to believe. So now we've given that side of things a brief airing. Let's have a look what else might be behind it. Maybe something a little bit more likely. A hoax. Could this whole thing have been a hoax? Yes, of course it could. Someone could have dressed up in a monster costume and hung out at the old armory building waiting to scare the first teenage knackers to park there. Well, mission accomplished. There might even have been several pranksters with suits popping out to scare people at various times and locations, but when the Mothman was being linked to the bridge disaster, they decided enough was enough and stopped doing it. Does this seem likely? Maybe, but what about all the flying about that the Mothman did? This was 1966, so it's not likely people had easy access to jetpacks or anything. <laughs> yeah, not like we do in 2022. If he was wearing one, the noise would have been very loud, and people would probably have eventually twigged that it was a guy flying about in a costume with a jetpack on. You'd be like, yeah, it's a fucking jet. Jets are loud. Even small jets are tiny. I remember watching a TV show when I was a kid. It was, like, it was like Tomorrow's World or one of these shows, like one of these cool tech shows. And a guy got a bicycle, like a regular bicycle. He put a mini jet engine, like a jet engine about the size of like, I don't know, I've got one of my sponsors right here is Athletic Greens. They've got like a, it's maybe a 10 centimeter diameter cylinder by 20 centimeters. It was a jet engine about this big attached to the back of a bicycle and it was absolutely whipping him along. And they had to say the the sound effect they, they didn't add sound effects to the video it was just enormously loud like Wah! 
this jet engine going off so if that was the mothman and he had jets people would be like he's got jets <laughs> they goddamn loud the feeling of dread and visions can probably be discounted as psychosomatic or even some type of mass hysteria as more and more people started seeing the mothman this this doesn't account for neil partridge he of the missing dog getting terrified though as his encounter was before news of the mothman hit town unless he just experienced your bog standard variety of terror and not the specially induced kind by the mothman <laughs> yeah it could also have been like he there was a i don't know what's there like cougars or shit like that like that ate his dog and was terrifying and reflective eyes and maybe you just thought they were red there are devices that can produce sonic waves to make people feel nauseous or, un or unwell but to have these going on as well as the scary scary costume and possible although unlikely jetpack is next level pranking and i don't really think it was going on in 1960 small town america no way it's not that Maybe there were things still at the armory in the TNT area that could be creating these waves so people like John Kill did experience them firsthand in the area and then everyone else who reported feeling a sense of doom in other parts of town was just feeding into the hysteria so it became a self-perpetuating thing. I mean, it's possible, right? Yeah, I mean, it's possible. It's really unlikely in my opinion, but it's possible. Let's just go back to the early encounters now and check in on what Mason County Sheriff George Johnson thought when the carload of youngsters screeched up to him with a wacky story. His theory is the one that most people seem to agree is most likely, even if it sounds unlikely, and that's that the Rothman is a very large bird. <laughs> it's a big ass seven foot bird. Ah! The November 1966 article about in the Point Pleasant Register states Sheriff Johnson's theory as follows, and it's kind of hilarious, as not only does this bird have one unfortunate name, its other is also funny if you have a juvenile sense of humor. Quote, Johnson, and I do, I do, so I get the feeling I'm going to find this amusing, whatever it might be. <laughs> we had a, in the last episode I recorded, there was a penis spirit, which I had a good laugh about. Quote, Johnson said he was not discounting the stories uh, that he was told, but he feels what he saw was nothing more than a freak <laughs> shitter poke. <laughs> really? Shitter poke, eh? I don't know what that word is. A large bird of the heron family. The shitter poke, <laughs> sometimes called a shag. <laughs> this is the most unfortunately named <laughs> creature ever. Does shag in, in British English that means to, uh, to, uh, well, it's what happens after necking. Uh, in the small town, is the smallest heron in the Western Hemisphere. Officials were at a loss, however, to explain how a shag could fly at 100 miles per hour, as Scarberry and Millet had said the creature did. End quote. Johnson was on the right track, but maybe he was just off on the classification. It's since been posited that the Mothman was really a sandhill crane. These birds kind of look like emus and are grey in colour with red patches around their eyes or on their heads. Their wing span can be up to 2 metres, that's 6.5 feet, and they can grow nearly 1.5 metres or just under five feet tall all right so on the surface that might not match the sheer size of the mothman but fear in the dark probably adds a couple of feet so i think we can still be in the ballpark here another suggested bird has been some sort of very large owl as some can be aggressive and might have caused the scratches on scarberry's car neither of these birds can fly at the reported speed of 100 miles per hour and the chevy was that the chevy was allegedly reaching though so that's another mystery argument that sting still hangs to this day actually it's a scratch what i said earlier about the kids making this up i think the kids saw something like that and their minds exaggerated it and uh and they exaggerated it probably like they probably weren't going 100 miles per hour the bird was probably keeping up with them at a regular normal speed and they yeah they just exaggerated things and then it just got all out of it just all got out of hand didn't it unless the couples in the car were totally misreading the speedometer and mistaken 100 miles per hour for around 35 miles per hour there's no real likelihood of the bird being able to keep up okay so that is a big difference though isn't it 35 to 100 i mean maybe it was keeping up at 35 and then they got faster and then it couldn't keep up and they were just like it kept up with us and then they were like yeah it did and you don't want to take back your lie even though you were just like harmlessly exaggerating and then everyone looks at the story and you're like no that's what happens even though you know it isn't like you get trapped in that line like i've told the story before about how my czech teacher was learning czech and she i'm pretty sure she thought i was like a professional tennis player because i just needed something to talk about in a lesson like why well, i did that weekend because i didn't do anything interesting and i wasn't very good at speaking the language so i was just like yeah i was playing tennis again and she's like you play tennis a lot and i was like yeah and i don't, I don't play tennis i was just saying it because i was i just knew how to say it in czech and then she'd always ask me how my tennis was going and i'd be like it's going great yeah it's going really well yeah i was playing it all the time and she just got into this crazy lie that I couldn't get out of. Oh, God. I never told her the truth. I never told her. She probably still thinks I'm playing tennis. Jesus. 
And most of the descriptions of the Mothman said that he had arms and legs, as well as wings. I'm not really sure how to debunk that one. A deformed or mutant crane? It's possible. And here's why. There are all kinds of things left over from the ammunition factory that could have been leaking out, and Point Pleasant sits at what's known at the end of what's known as Chemical Valley. Point Pleasant doesn't sound very pleasant. Uh, this is a chain of chemical manufacturing plants and storage facilities clustered along the Kanawha River that flows all the way down into the Ohio River, right where Point Pleasant is. You know there's got to be all kinds of things washing down the river, especially in the past. Agent Orange was manufactured about 40 miles upstream in Nitro, West Virginia from the 40s to the 70s, so it's totally un so it's not totally unrealistic to think that a crane or other type of very large bird might have ingested chemicals in the area and then got some sort of mutations. Or heck, maybe it was a man who grew wings after drinking the, decam uh, drinking the contaminated water. Yeah, it sounds unlikely. Um, Point Pleasant doesn't sound pleasant. It's, it's next to Chemical Valley in a place called Nitro. <laughs> Interestingly, a group of very large birds was seen 70 or so miles north of Point Pleasant at the time the so-called Mothman started terrorizing the town. A hunter, George Wolf Jr., is reported in Kill's book as having seen a seven-foot-tall bird that looked something like an ostrich in a cornfield. So, there were cranes in the area at the time. Another family also reported having seen a group of very large birds, about as big as a man who would or about as big as a man would look moving around in the trees with a wingspan of at least ten feet. So, is the mystery solved? Well, not to the satisfaction of John Keel. He apparently showed pictures of the Sandhill Crane to some Mothman witnesses, and they confirmed that it was not what they'd seen. Whether this is enough to keep the Mothman story alive or not, I'm not sure, but to have built something up so much in your mind only to be told that it was just a large bird would have probably had most people completely denying it. Yeah, but this is the thing, and people are, it's really hard to change people's opinions. They're like, no, 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 Mothman is real, I saw the Mothman. And then you, if this was so many years ago, you keep thinking back about seeing the Mothman, and every time it changes your memory of the Mothman. Mothman. So you become more convinced that the Mothman is definitely real when he's... It's probably not, to be honest. Other stuff the Mothman has been getting up to. <laughs> he disappeared from Point Pleasant in 1967, but has old Mothy been up to anything else since his, since it left? Yeah, he was in a movie with Richard Gere. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it's a, his alleged but probably apocryphal sightings on the day of the bridge collapse cemented him as a link to large disasters, and as such, he's apparently been making cameo appearances throughout history. Just imagine a montage of big disasters with the camera zooming in on a winged person giving a thumbs up in the background and you get the idea. <laughs> it's just in the back, you're like, hey! <laughs> a, a tsunami rolls in and there's a mothman just like, hey! <laughs> Classic. While there's no pictorial proof, obviously, he or similar winged humanoids have been, again, we'll say allegedly, spotted before a dam burst in China in 1926, killing 15,000 people in Germany in 1978, uh, been spotted before a dam burst in China in 1926, killing 15,000 people in Germany in 1978, uh, spooky Mothman scared away workers from a mine in Freiburg just before it collapsed. Well, these sound quite uncanny, but when I checked into these examples further, the events just don't appear to have happened, so I think we can assume that they were made up. They appear on a lot of Mothman websites, though, showing that people are incapable of doing even a literal five-second search on Google before believing everything they read. Ah, yes, the internet. This is all the time. You'll read some fact, and then everyone is just sourcing each other, and it just turns up to be some made-up fact. Like, Snopes is your friend. They're the debunking website. They'll just be like, it's not true. Or, um, there's other ones that do this as well. It's great. He has been linked to actual events, though, to name a few. Sightings of a Mothman figure and people having weird dreams and feelings of dread have, been, have surrounded the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. Well, not surprisingly, if you were around the Chernobyl disaster, you probably have feelings of dread. Because, like, of course you do. A nuclear power plant erupted right next to you. You're gonna have, like, some PTSD from that. And maybe radiation issues? None other than the Twin Towers in New York of September 2001 and another bridge collapse, this one in Minneapolis in 2007, the location of an outbreak of swine flu in Mexico in 2009, and the Fukushima meltdown in 2011. If we're picking sides, I'll go on the warning people of forthcoming disaster side rather than the Mothman being the cause of them, because otherwise he seems way too scary and powerful. Yeah, you can't just blame the Mothman. What, what caused 9-11? Was it, you know, Bin Laden and his crew. No, 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 it's the Mothman. He was inside Bin Laden's mind. <laughs> oh, Mothman. These can easily be shrugged off as people putting things together that were just coincidental, having mistaken something they'd seen or just making things up afterwards to further the mythos. There are some more modern examples of Mothman encounters that are actually quite compelling, though. 
We'll see, Katie, won't we? The sources for the sightings are pilots and staff of the O'Hare Airport in Chicago. You'd think the pilots are pretty used to seeing all sorts of weird things flying where they shouldn't, and you'd hope that they were in a clear and non-compromised state of mind when being in charge of hundreds of lives in a big metal tube flying thousands of feet above the planet. Yeah. Airplanes are scary. I'm not afraid of flying, but it is a scary concept. What are we going to do? We're going to tr- strap these massively powerful engines to the side of this cigar tube and blast it through the sky faster than anyone has ever been before. Hi- really high up. And what happens if there's a problem? Just crashes, doesn't it? Just. <laughs> There's a website called UFO Clearinghouse where people can report weird things that they've witnessed, and in May 2020, a pilot contacted the site with the following story. I was flying into O'Hare International Airport at approximately 7.30 a.m. that morning. As we're taxiing off the active runway and... And toward the terminal, I spotted something out of the corner of my eye. I turned to see a large black human-like creature fly up and into the sky. I saw this creature for about four seconds before he flew up and over the cockpit and above the cockpit window and out of sight. I immediately shouted it to my co-pilot who caught a glimpse of it before it flew out of sight. We were both awestruck by this sighting and it left us completely dumbfounded. Take a hit off that oxygen mask, pilot. Just like, make sure you're all good. Apparently, the pilots had also mentioned it in pilot circles on social media, and several other people confirmed that they'd seen creepy winged humanoids in and around the airport. After this story was published, another pilot contacted UFO Clearinghouse with an encounter that it had the previous year. Are these pilots verifying their piloty identities? Because, hmm? I mean, it's the internet. It'd be like, yeah, I'm a pilot. Sure, why not? Yeah, I'm also a god. Uh, I saw a large human with enormous wings. Oh, sorry, this is a quote. Uh, glowing red eyes perched upon a rail and looking straight at me. The being appeared to be squatting down on the rail, but had its wings completely open and moved them slowly as he stared at the shuttle bus as we drove by. I knew it was watching me as its head swiveled and followed the shuttle as we passed. Its eyes locked on me the entire time. The creature had become, has become known as the Ahair Mothman or Ahair Batman, but who knows if it's the same sort of thing that was hanging around Point Pleasant in the 1960s or something else entirely. Or if it's just a guy with a jetpack. It's the 21st century now and people actually have access to these types of things. <laughs> Nobody's managed to capture the Mothman on camera, apart from one laughably flake fake looking attempt in 2006, which looks so unrealistic that it barely got any traction past the local news station that originally reported it. Conclusions What? can we conclude about this strange being that haunted Point Pleasant for a year before disappearing into the folklore of the town? Was it merely a very large crane or an aggressive owl, or was somebody playing quite a long-running prank? Were those men in black really there, or was the town just on high alert so people were extremely paranoid about strangers? Was there really a cryptid hiding out in the woods, desperately trying to alert people that the bridge was about to fall down? But the real answer, the legacy of the Mothman lives on in, po- in Point Pleasant with a popular annual festival and even the world's only mothman museum <laughs> it's gonna be really full of nothing <laughs> which has press clippings from the original events well there you go as well as props from the mothman prophecies movie and a lot of merch yes when the gift store is most of the museum you know it's not a great museum there's a large metal statue outside the museum with a live feed to view it on the moth cam I was pretty sniffy about this, but periodically checked it over the course of writing this piece, and dang it if there wasn't at least a couple of people taking photographs next to it every time I looked. The wings are definitely more butterfly-like on the statue, pulling in the descri- pulling the description more towards the Mothman name than the actual descriptions witnesses gave of it, but it's a pretty cool monument dedicated to the strange year that he chose to scare the, ta- the people of the town silly. This is all fun! Like, I like this! Like, I don't really believe it, but I love the, 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 the story that there's a museum, that the town just leans into it. I think it's fun. Personally, I have no real idea what to make of the original Muthman story. The people involved definitely believed it was a real supernatural creature, so who am I to poo-poo what they experienced? <laughs> don't worry, Katie, I've absolutely done that for you. And the apparent disparity between what they thought they saw, a large winged humanoid with arms and legs, and what they might actually have seen, a large bird is so big that it might not be accounted for by mere fright and suggestion. And what about the recent sightings at Chicago's O'Hare Airport? I was not aware of this, but a UFO was also seen at O'Hare in 2006 when at least 12 airport employees and pilots saw a grey disc hovering over a gate. It then shot up into the air and disappeared. The incident was not investigated by any federal agency as attributed to weather phenomenon. One explanation given was that it was a rare hole-punched cloud or fall-streak hole, which, while kind of a buzzkill, 
is pretty cool to look at in itself. I am going to immediately after this go and look up those up on YouTube because that sounds cool. If it was a UFO, are there also demon-like visitors hanging around the world's sick busiest airport? There's only one way to find out. Maybe this time we can heed the Mothman's warning in time and prevent a catastrophe before it's too late. This has been an episode of The Code in the Unknown. Thank you so much for uh, listening or watching if you're watching on YouTube. Hello. Thank you, thank you. If you'd like to leave a review for this podcast, that would be amazing. I read the reviews. I see them. There's a website that compiles all the reviews from different countries into one place. So wherever you leave it, I tend to see it. Uh, yeah, if you're on YouTube, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. Like this video, etc., etc. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>